Casablanca, the largest city in Morocco and the economic and business heart of the country. Yet many people only know Casablanca as the name of a 1942 Hollywood movie or the home of the magnificent Hassan II Mosque. But Casablanca has so much more to offer. In fact, a walk through Casablanca is a walk through Morocco's history. We're Chris and Lydia. Join us today as we take that walk. But first, we need to find our hotel after arriving on an eight-hour flight from Dubai. I can see Morocco. How exciting. Welcome to the Kingdom of Morocco. We have flown here today from Sydney, Australia via Dubai. You can see what we got up to in Dubai in our earlier videos, which I'll link in the description below. Morocco is a country in the northwestern corner of North Africa, strategically located between the Mediterranean Sea to the north and the Atlantic Ocean to the west. Today we have flown into Casablanca, the country's economic and business capital located on the Atlantic coast. The city of Casablanca began as a small village called Anfa more than 3,000 years ago. It was inhabited by the indigenous people of Morocco, called the Berber or Emezean people. Because of its importance as a port city, it's been invaded and ruled over by many countries and civilizations over the centuries. About 1,000 years ago, the Portuguese destroyed the town of Anfa to rid the area of pirates. They subsequently rebuilt the town, calling it Casa Branca, meaning White House, possibly after a white building that remained in the ruined city. When the Portuguese moved out, Spanish influence grew and Casa Branca became Casa Blanca. We've arrived at our hotel, the Val de Anfa Hotel in Casablanca, and it's right by the water. Oh, look at this. That's pretty. Oh, this is nice. in the entryway to the lift. It's beautiful. Welcome to Casablanca. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you around. This is interesting. So first observation is what? I think you can sit on the toilet and do a wee into the No. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think that's what that's for. <laughs> But you've got a bath, so you'll be happy. I'm happy, that's good. There we go. Little toiletries, Moroccan toiletries. Mirror, a cupboard, nice, good sized bed, bottle of water. Let's have a look at the view. We've got an ocean view. Have we? There we go, look at that. Oh, we can see the ocean. Oh, beautiful. Have the window open, we can hear the ocean. What's all that on the building it costs for this? Thank you. Oh, I just said to Chris I'm getting a bit of a faulty showers vibes yeah. with our hotel. <laughs> I didn't expect it. I didn't expect it. No, I'm not just the petite taxis are a cheap and quick way to get around Casablanca. They're not the most luxurious though. <laughs> Good morning everyone and welcome to Morocco's largest city, Casablanca. This is our first full day here. We're going to do a bit of a tour this morning. And the only time I've heard of Casablanca before I came here was from the old Humphrey Bogart movie of the same name. And I'm standing at the moment in front of a replica of 
Rick's Cafe, which is the gin joint from the movie. Casablanca has the largest port in Morocco. It's got a lovely position on the Atlantic Ocean. So hopefully we'll get to see a nice sunset this evening. The early morning start to our walking tour meant that we couldn't go inside Rick's. So we set off on foot to explore the old Medina, which is essentially Casablanca before the start of the 20th century, where the population lived, worked and shopped. Although it's small in comparison to the Medinas of Fez and Marrakesh, it's still full of tiny lanes and alleyways in which to get lost and explore. After the Portuguese left Casablanca in the 18th century, the Moroccans built defensive walls around the Medina and restored the old fortress overlooking the port, which they called La Scala. This is the old fort built in the 1760s to protect Casablanca. Casablanca is a major economic and port city on the Atlantic here in Morocco. The fort is now a famous restaurant buffet for 400 euro, which is about 60 Australian dollars. The Medina is the old part of town. Uh, every city will have its own Medina. Casablanca isn't that old, but it's our first one, so it's very interesting. It's quiet at the moment, it's still early in the morning. still in uh, Medina, but we've moved from the residential part of the Medina to more the commerce part. All the shop owners are just setting up for the day. So some are closed, some are just opening. We have some sprukers already trying to sell us uh, their wares. Later in the day it'll be bustling through here. Just left the Medina through the gate in the old city walls and we're entering the more modern Art Deco part of town. Casablanca's importance as a centre for trade grew throughout the 19th century. In the early 20th century, France took control of the city when much of Morocco was declared a French protectorate in 1912. Thankfully, the French left the old Medina alone, but they instead built their own town outside of the old city walls. It looks very Parisian with wide streets and large balconies. This is the new part of town which has been built since the start of the 20th century and it's been built in the Art Deco style. If you compare that to the, the Riyads from the Medina where there were small windows on the outside, large windows on the inside opening up into a centre courtyard. Here in the new part of town all the balconies are white until this tram goes by. The Art Deco style has large balconies on the outside, so it's uh, very, very different to the old Medina, the old town. We're in the central market area now. It's only 11 o'clock in the morning, so it's not busy yet. Look at the little kittens. Habous Quarter. The Habous Quarter is also known as the New Medina 
It was built by the French in the 1920s and 30s to solve a housing crisis in the city. The architects took inspiration from Moroccan styles and traditions, so it has both European influences, such as wide streets, as well as traditional Moroccan arches, riads, souks and bazaars. For me, one of the highlights was the Great Haboose Olive Market, although I don't know if Lydia was of the same opinion. Do you like olives? <laughs> <laughs> In 1956, after a number of revolts against colonial rule, Morocco regained its independence. Their leader, Sultan Mohammed V, became king the following year. In the centre of Casablanca is a square bearing the king's name. Mohammed V Square is also known as Pigeon Square for obvious reasons. So there's people walking around that got seen big pigeons, but I just said to Chris, I, that's the last thing I want is pigeons landing and eating on me, no thanks. And, and you have to pay for the courtesy as well. So yeah, no, nah, not doing that. <laughs> After walking around Casablanca all morning, we had built up quite an appetite. Lunch included mint tea, bread and olives, followed by a tagine, which is a cone-shaped clay pot used to slow cook a stew of meat and vegetables. Over the next two and a half weeks, we became very familiar with this meal. I think I did right. Yeah, it looks good. So you have to, so to pour a cup of tea, so it's mint tea, so it's green tea and mint. And you do this twice, two to three times, like that. Oh, sugar. No, you don't do it. <laughs> you do the first take. Okay. Oh, no. And the, the more times you do it, the nicer the tea. Is that the... Well, and then you let it sit. You let it sit on your shirt? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty standard. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you want? Okay. First tagine. <laughs> First tagine of the trip. You've got a, mm. you've got got a chook. Mm -hmm. I've got, got the beef. You've got boof. Boof. That's what he <laughs> called it. <laughs> <laughs> a visit to Casablanca would not be complete without a tour of the magnificent Hassan II Mosque, one of the largest and most beautiful mosques in the world. The interior of the mosque is just as breathtaking as its exterior, serving as a testament to the exceptional talent of Moroccan craftsmen. When Morocco's first king, Mohammed V, passed away in 1961, his son Hassan II became king and commissioned the building of a great mosque to give Casablanca a cultural icon. Thousands of workers and craftsmen worked around the clock for six years to build Hassan II Mosque. The mosque's tower, or minaret, was the tallest in the world at the time the mosque opened in 1993, standing at 210 metres high. We're in a golf cart at the King Hassan II Mosque. We're just having to sit back and relax. And, oh, this is lovely. One third of the mosque is built over the Atlantic Ocean, inspired by a Quranic verse which says that God's throne was built over the water. Hassan II Mosque is one of only two mosques in Morocco that's open to non-Muslims, but you have to be on a paid guided tour. Wow, this is amazing. This is so beautiful. It's awe-inspiring. Just look at the size of Lydia compared 
to the size of this building. And the beautiful ornate ceilings, chandeliers, archways. This is an immense mosque. It was built from 1987 to 1993. This prayer room is 200 meters long, 100 meters wide and 65 meters tall. Look at that cedar wood ceiling. 105,000 worshippers can gather for prayer. 25,000 in the main prayer room and another 80,000 in the outside concourse. Almost all of the construction materials used come from Morocco, from the intricately carved cedarwood ceilings, the ornate plaster mouldings and exquisite mosaic tiles, and the beautiful granite and marble columns and floors. The only exceptions are some Italian white granite columns and the Murano glass chandeliers from Venice. The mosque is built for comfort too. Electric heated floors keep worshippers warm on those cold winter days. And the ceiling is built in two parts. So when it gets hot, the electric sliding roof opens to let the fresh air in. So underneath the minaret, the highest point of the mosque. This is the washroom for men. There's another one for women. 41 fountains where you wash before going upstairs to pray. Back in the hotel now after a really good walking tour of Casablanca. But it's a lovely afternoon here, so we might put our feet up now, go for a walk in an hour or so, and maybe see a nice sunset hopefully. It was a great uh, tour that we did this morning. It ended up, it was going to be nine till one originally, but the tour went till, what time did we finish? About four. Oh, yeah, it was nearly four o'clock. Yeah, it was nearly four o'clock. So our guide, whose name was? Abdel. I could never remember. It's hard remembering everyone's names. But his name was Abdel and he was a fabulous guide. So he went out of his way to make sure that we got to see inside the mosque and also outside, which was fabulous mm -hmm. because it was worth, well worth seeing. It was just a marvel how they built this incredible mosque in six years and just the detail and the craftsmanship. And uh, It was it was amazing. It was very different to uh, going to see some of the um, Christian cathedrals in Europe. There was no effigies or, or figures, no paintings or statues of, of humans. It was all ornate decoration, mm -hmm. mosaics, carvings. But the just the uh, 
the scale of the place. It it's was incredible. just, it just took your breath away. Took six years to build, but they had 12,500 craftspeople just working on this over mm. the six years. And you can see that they would have needed that because the detail in everything, the mosaicing, the car- wood carving, the plastering, it was just incredible. So definitely yeah. a highlight oh. of coming to Casablanca. I would think that over, if that's all you have time to do, I would say definitely go and see that. And go inside. Don't just walk around the outside. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Abdel. And um, we recommend Viator for the tour. We'll put it down in the notes what tour we actually did. It was fantastic. Great day out. And we're setting off tomorrow on uh, uh, on our road trip. So we'll yeah. be going to Rabat and then Cheshawan. Cheshawan. <laughs> got to get my tongue around these the blue city yeah the blue city is probably easier for us to say i haven't quite got the uh the wording right yet so if you like what you've seen today please hit like and subscribe below and please subscribe and come roving with us around morocco next time that will show us that you um are enjoying what content we're giving you and hopefully we can give you some more so see you soon